My name is Greg. I'd like to talk to you today about uh, a story in the Bible, in the Old Testament. It was uh, when the children of Israel were, were uh, traveling through the wilderness. They had left Egypt. Moses was their leader. And they traveled for 40 years through the wilderness before they got to Canaan land, to the Promised Land. As they were traveling, uh, the people began to complain and murmur, you know, like a lot of a lot of us do sometimes. But they began to complain and, and grumble and murmur against the Lord and against Moses, their leader. And the Bible says that God sent fiery serpents into their midst, and they they bit the they bit the people. They were snakes, poisonous snakes. And the Bible tells us that many people died uh, there, you know, in that camp. And there was a lot of people. There were several millions of people, two or three million Israelites that were traveling through the wilderness. And there were many thousands of them that died. And they began to cry out to the Lord, to God, for mercy and, and repentance. And God spoke to Moses in response to their prayers and their repentance. And he told Moses, he said, make a, a serpent of brass, a fiery serpent of brass. Make it look like a snake, you know, and put it up on a pole in the center of the camp and lift it up really high on a pole. And so anyone who was bitten with a snake then could... They could make their way to the center of the camp. And if they look at that brass serpent upon a pole, they'll, they'll live. They won't die. And it would save them. So the circumference of Israel's camp was, I guess, miles, really. Three, two or three million people. It would be spread out quite a bit. So if you're on the outskirts of the camp and you were bitten in a bad place say the neck or something you better you had to really get there fast to the center of the camp and look at that serpent and that's all you had to do you didn't have to do anything else you just had to get to where you could see it and when you saw it you would live and not die it was simply uh, an act of faith really is what it was is an act of faith you just obeyed what God said and because of your obedience you were uh, you were spared well over in the New Testament in the third chapter of the Gospel of John Jesus is talking to a man by the name of Nicodemus who is a Pharisee he is a religious man he is a, a very educated religious man and uh, he was one of the uh, the religious leaders there in, in the temple during that day probably even a member of the Sanhedrin court. And Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus how that faith in himself, in Jesus, could save a man. And so Jesus told Nicodemus this story. He said, And as Moses in the wilderness lifted up the bronze image of a serpent on a pole, just like the story I just told you, Jesus said, Even so must I be lifted up upon a pole, a cross, so that anyone who believes in me will have eternal life. All you got to do is believe. Just as the people in Moses' day made their way to the center of the camp and gazed upon that brazen serpent, and they lived. They didn't die, they lived. Jesus said, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must I, the Son of Man, be lifted up, that whosoever believes in me will have eternal life. So, I ask you today, have you believed in Jesus? Have you placed your trust and your confidence in Jesus? You say, well... Do, I don't really need to do that. I don't, I don't really need to do that to be saved to go to heaven. Well, yes you do. Uh, in the Garden of Eden, when, when Adam and Eve sinned and fell and, and into disobedience against God, they, their sin caused the separation between them and their 
their Heavenly Father, God, our Creator. And sin was in Adam and Eve, and that sin was passed down through their children, and then through their children, and to the whole race of humanity, which is every one of us that are alive here on the earth today. We, we are, we are uh, suffering the consequences of Adam's sin, which was disobedience and rebellion against God. Of course, Adam and Eve were deceived, and, or at least Eve was, coerced into, into disobedience by Satan. So as a result of that sin, we don't have access to God anymore. We, we're cut off from His presence. But there is a way. There is a door that leads back into the presence of our Creator, our Father. And that door is Jesus Christ. His, his death on, on the cross, He shed His blood. He's called the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world by one of the apostles in, in the book, in the Bible. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So, he was sacrificed on the cross. His blood was shed. He became a substitute sacrifice. We deserve the penalty of death and hell. We deserve to die. We deserve it. It's whether we like that or not, we deserve that. But God gave grace and mercy in Jesus. And he sent his only begotten son into the world to die for the sins of the world which is us and by a simple act of faith which which means as we look at Jesus upon the cross and we believe that he did die for us God imputes that as righteousness into our lives he accepts that it, we believe that he is our substitute that Jesus is our substitute that because he died in our place, then we get to live. He, he took our death and He gave us His life. He took our sin and He gave us His righteousness. He took our inability and our weakness and He gave us His ability and His strength and so much more. And He has promised to be a Father to us and to provide for us in this life and to take care of us. And if you're lonely and hurting, give your heart to the Lord. Give your heart to the Lord. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest unto your souls. He also said, them that come unto me I will in no wise cast out. So today if you're hurting and you're in trouble. And you know. You know if you are. You know if your heart's right with the Lord. There's a great hunger in your heart to know the Lord. There, or there's a great hunger in you. And you can't satisfy it with anything else. Only, only a relationship with your creator will give you that satisfaction. Only a relationship with the God that made you in His image, after His likeness, and He created you for the, the specific and sole purpose of you knowing Him and Him knowing you and you being a part of His family. He wants you to be a part of His family. So I encourage you today to give your heart to the Lord. If you're not, if you're not a Christian, if you're not saved, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about shaking somebody's hand or, or saying some, some words. I'm talking about crying out out of the depth of your heart, asking God to reveal Himself to you. And He will do it, I promise you. He will reveal Himself to you. And He'll do it through uh, the, His Son, Jesus. Jesus is the door that leads to the Father. And I pray today that, you're, uh, that you'll take that step. And right where you are today, you'll ask uh, in your own way, just ask God to forgive you. Tell Him you believe in Jesus, that He died for you, and ask Him to forgive you. And I promise you, if you mean that with your heart, He'll do it.
God bless you.